What up, guys? Welcome to the long-winded, short-tempered podcast. It's still me, Alex Balfour, but it's a new year, so it's a newer me. Um, and this year, I'm trying to be more positive because I'm always just like a cynical ass, and I always just see the worst in things. And um, uh, part of that has to do with anxiety, which is also why I'm changing because I don't want to look like an ass anymore. I don't want to look like I don't care. I don't want to look like I, you know. Like, I don't want people to avoid me because of what I've done in the past because I'm trying to change from that. And um, that's not like a signal for attention where it's like, oh, look at me. I'm trying to change. But it's it's like genuine. Like, I feel bad about a lot of the shit I did. Um, and not not only for, like for me, but like for what I did to people. And just the idea that I can't really control everything. And as much as I think I do, and as much as I want to think that what I'm doing is for the best of people, sometimes it's not always like that. And that's how it always is, but now I'm just trying to learn from all the stupid things I've done, Um, all the times i blame someone else for whatever, or thought it was their problem to solve. Just understanding that, you know, if you take the blame for something, even if it's not completely your fault, you're going to be better for it. Because anyone can argue and say, oh, that's not my problem, that's theirs, but... If you just if you just take it all on the chest and um, you know just try to solve the problem as if it's all yours, like you're you're just gonna learn more from it and you're gonna be better for it. Um, so yeah, that's that's the summation of um, what I'm trying to do here in 2019. I already have the positive positivity thing on my Instagram, which isn't too po- I mean it's positive because of the message, but. Not too positive because of what happened. I don't know if I'll ever get into that. I think at some point I do want to just like make a whole something for it because it's really important to me just knowing how like low I was at some point. And yeah, so we're just using all that to become better. Uh, It's been a while. Uh, I did come out with a second episode months back, like two weeks after my first one. And I didn't really, um, you know, push it. I just, like, uploaded it and didn't tweet about it, so no one knew, because no one subscribes. That's completely fine. This is more for me, anyway. If other people listen, that's, that's straight. Um, but, yeah, I don't know when the next one will be. It's, it's all up on how I feel, and, yeah. Okay, so, today, I woke up good, and then I saw the whole, um, like, the TikTok thing, where it's like, this is my voice, one week on, this is, yeah, that whole thing, and then I saw um, someone get a lot of likes and retweets on Twitter, obviously, um, just about how they were like, oh, this is mocking the trans movement, and obviously just because one person uh, is offended by it doesn't mean that the whole group is offended by it, obviously, because it's like person by person, but I, I, I don't know, I, I feel like part of those likes and retweets were genuine, like, people offended that were in the trans community, but some of it is just, like, ah, this person's offended, and so now I gotta come to the rescue, even though there's, like, thousands of people who are just not affected by it, even if they are trans, and, like, I didn't even see that. We're just at a point where we're reading too far into things, but, yeah, anyway, I never thought about that as the trans thing. Like, I've seen the trans, like, videos that are related to it, but, like, there's a point where it's mocking if you're doing stupid shit, but then there's also just a point where, like, people are having fun and running with it and don't even know it's about the trans thing. And so to get mad at them if they didn't know that, maybe maybe the first one was based off that. But there's also a very great chance that the first one was not based off that, and it was just a funny idea. Because arguably, like, there is some humor in it, whether or not, like, you want to see it. That's something we also have to learn, is that just because you don't think it's funny doesn't mean it's not funny, Okay. If you don't think it's funny, you shouldn't, you know, have Twitter expose them for everything they've done just because you didn't think it was funny. Now everyone, like, Twitter isn't, even comedians on Twitter, they're not putting out their greatest bits, they're just putting out, like, you know, silly shit, you know, something that might get a laugh, but the the whole point is to save the good stuff for on stage, so no one on Twitter is putting out their best work. It's, it's all just, like, ideas and drafts, it's never, like, a final product, no one spends, like, weeks working on a tweet, and then they finally put it out, unless it's, like, a video or, like, an edit or something. But, yeah, we gotta stop coming down on that, because it's not even, like, 
oh, well, you're not a comedian, so you can't be funny or whatever. This isn't funny. This isn't a joke. You're actually serious about this. You're actually racist, but it's not like that because if even comedians are under fire for it as people who are supposed to make people like laugh, and some of them are just offensive to make people laugh, and I, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, just because you're going through something, just because you're being marginalized in a society, um, doesn't make you exempt from, you know, like being a subject in comedy. And I never understood that. Like, do you want us to treat you normal or do we want to, do you want to be coddled like a, like a three-year-old where it's like, everything's going to be fine. Don't worry. Like you're, you're not going to be better for it. You're only going to get more offended in the future. You're only going to be more sensitive if you're always on the defensive and maybe you're, and, and never just like, oh, okay, maybe I won't let that affect my fucking week. You know, maybe, hey, maybe I can just let it go. Maybe I can be mad and then just not worry about it. Obviously, part of that's just my personality where I get over things fast. And also part of my personality, oh, guess what? It's making jokes that come at the expense of someone occasionally. But I make jokes at the expense of myself. I'll make jokes at the expense of friends. So if I make jokes at the expense of people I don't like, I'm only treating you like everyone else in this world, okay? Everyone's getting equal treatment. No one's safe, you know? Like, I, I don't get it. Like, you're not, sp like, just because I targeted you with one joke or whatever, it doesn't mean I'm targeting you, like, it's not part of my agenda. It's just funny or whatever. Um, I mean, it's always the weird things that get me to laugh. And so that's kind of annoying. Um, cause I don't know, I didn't like develop this sense of humor by choice. I didn't choose. I, I just, like grew up in it. This is always just what kind of, I hate to go full white, but that it's just always what tickled my fancy. So, you know, it's what, it's always, it's what always float, float in my boat and my boat's afloat and I don't really feel like going down with the ship. So that's the way it's going to be in 2018, 2019. God. Okay. 2019. Yeah, we get it. Maybe I'm not too uh, into the whole change thing if I'm already saying 2019, but regardless. So, yeah, after seeing the whole trans people getting mad at um, the This Is My Voice one week after Dora. Um, Hey, don't make it all about you. Um, If the shoe fits, hey, maybe you don't have to put it on. How many times have you gone to a shoe store, worn a shoe that was your size, and was like, I don't want to buy it. Just because it fits you doesn't mean you have to take it with you, okay? You can leave it there. You know, just leave it in the past. Like, you don't have to bring it with you all the time. You don't have to keep it as baggage. Like, oh, well, this happened to me in the past. So, obviously, this works differently for, like, traumatic events. But if there's anyone getting trauma or feels like their whole life is ruined because they were targeted once by a joke or by something someone said, or if someone was genuinely just, like, offensive like by nature if they were racist sexist transphobic the whole list like you're only giving that side more power by being offended you're only giving that side more power by letting them know that it affects you because if someone's racist it, and they get gratification from putting other people down it's the same thing with a bully they always tell you like hey just don't give him what he wants and so for you to think that by always being offended, people will learn and be like, well, maybe we shouldn't say that. Maybe the problem isn't necessarily, obviously in the case of people who genuinely mean it and are genuinely just trying to be an ass, then they need to change. But not every time that you get offended, the other person has to change because you're not everyone either. Just because you're offended doesn't mean everyone else will. doesn't mean everyone else has to change because of you. Maybe you need to change. Maybe you need to be less, you know, like sensitive to these things. Maybe you have to understand that it's a joke or, you know, like, I don't know. We're just at a point where society's like hypersensitive and obviously it's, it's a cyclical thing. And I understand that. You'll basically this, this whole podcast, if I just keep talking about this, I'm, I'm always looking at the other side. And so if anyone gets mad at me for looking at the other side, I don't understand. Um, in terms of that. I put it on Twitter today, if anyone noticed. 
um it was like hey if you guys know anyone that's trans like i want to talk to them or whatever because i don't understand it and this has been going on for like two years where i've just been like i, I kind of just want to know because i i don't first of all i don't understand their side completely because oh what do you know i'm not trans um but i just have a lot of questions like um i don't know I'll, I'll, I can go over that at some point later, but there's just a lot of things that I have to ask. There's a lot of things that I want to critique. There's a lot of things that I want to be like, okay, yeah, you're right on that. And that's the point. You don't have to, in, in order to be understanding, you, <clears throat> you don't have to agree with them all the time, yeah, but you don't have to be an asshole when you're critiquing them. Like the whole point of like this, if I were to do it, if anyone were to like, you know, find a trans person, that, like the whole point is to learn for both of us so if i'm pointing out hey maybe there's flaws over there and you're not being understanding that doesn't make me transphobic you're just fucking closed-minded and that's a distinction that we have to learn is just because like you're sensitive to it like maybe you're the one that is closed-minded about it and you should understand hey some people just don't get it some people look at it and they're like well why would you not like like why are you like not happy with your given like identity or whatever and there's the whole thing of like gender dysphoria where it's like is it a mental thing which personally i can i can understand the the stance where it's like gender dysphoria is like a mental thing just because like biologically like we're um sexually dimorphic um which would be like man and woman and you got to make a baby somehow and so hear me out on this if you have two animals, right, one's a male, one's a female, basically just on sexual reproductive organs, that's all we're going to talk about here. If if the animal with a, with a penis turns out he doesn't feel like a man and he doesn't under, and he doesn't want those responsibilities of, you know, impregnating the other like female with a vagina, um, then that only puts the future of the species at risk in terms of like, you know, like animals because that's a like yeah like reproduction is a whole goal so if you have an animal that's supposed to be you know popping his sausage and all the girls around and he's just not well he's he's not really contributing to the species or anything and so that would be an issue where it's like females would be like oh well we don't want to group with him because he's not out here slaying and he's not out here making his move so that we can continue as a species so when it comes to humans i don't understand how it's not looked at as um at least an issue that needs to be resolved not not resolved as in like hey don't be trans but like um just i don't know like obviously that would make you because it it is a mental issue in a sense where it's like well if you're born a male and you feel like a woman something went wrong in a sense of like well now now you're deviating from the path of like your whole goal which is to make kids and die Obviously, as a progressed species, we're at a point where there's more to life because we can choose, and there's so many of us, God knows there's way too many of us, where you can choose, like, you know what, maybe I just don't want to have sex and have kids, you know, maybe I just want to wrap it up and, you know, never have to, ha- never have to pay, like, a child payment, or, you know, I don't have to put anyone through college, but, like, if you're, if you're not satisfied with, like, the gender you were given at birth, it, it's just, a, it's just, you know, it's it's unusual to say the least, or to say the most. I don't, I don't know. It's in the middle ground of least and most. But it's like, it's not that it's an issue. It's more that I'm just wondering, like, like I don't know why why we're expected to understand it completely if we're not going through it. It's the I mean, it's the whole mental illness thing in general, where it's like if someone has depression and you're not depressed, you're like, hey, why do you feel sad? Like that's an issue because you're not feeling how you're supposed to. That's all I'm trying to say. Now, I'm like that'll probably scare someone off because they're like, "Wow, this guy's a real dick." But honestly, I'm not. Honestly, I just want to know. I just want to learn. And the, whether it's my tone, which is monotone, or it's just the way I speak because it's all casual and not like specific or well, it I don't know. It's it's not put together as nicely. If I were to type up an essay or whatever, It's going to sound phenomenal. I'm going to get a 95 on it, like I did all semester, except for the one time my writing teacher gave me a 90, even though she looked me in my face and told me it was good. She was like, oh, this is pretty good. Oh, cool. And it's only one draft. So give me a 90. Cool. Bye. Don't do that. Don't give me 95s all year and then give... Anyway, yeah. So I don't like her. Because I didn't have a fucking A for the course. I had an A-. minus. Anyway.
So, yeah, these are just some things I've been thinking about recently, and especially after seeing it. Um, so I have a lot of shit in my notes just about this, and then from there we can, you know, float. Um, yeah, so the idea of just being offended over everything and that the, the person who's offending you has to change... I don't understand that. Obviously, sometimes, like, the other person has to be like, oh, hey, I was a real asshole. Maybe I should not be like this. That makes sense. But sometimes it's like, oh, well, if I keep getting hurt, maybe I should, you know, put on knee pads when I go biking. Instead of suing Biker's Edge for selling me the bike that got me, like, a scraped knee. Um. So, yeah, using intent and context, we I feel like we've drifted up far away from, like, intent and context where it's like well if i'm offended that's all that matters not what you were trying to do i don't like that again that's a personality thing where i don't just get over things pretty easily but like nowadays if if you defend what you said because oh well my intent was or like the context of it now it just sounds like you're like justifying racism or sexism trans like you know like whatever it is isms when it's just logic, when it's just like, well, obviously, if I meant this, this is why I would say that, and I was expecting this result. If you don't get that result, you live it and you learn. Maybe you don't say that thing to that person, but that doesn't make you an awful person. Like, if a joke doesn't land, you're not the least funny person on the planet all of a sudden. It just didn't work that time. And so now, like, if you get considered, like, racist or sexist, it doesn't even have to be for anything real, and so now the real threats, like, we're not even getting to those, we're not even dealing with the big issues, we're dealing with all the small shit that gets in our way, be just because there's more of it, which isn't what we have to do, like, you have to go after, like, the people who are actually racist and sexist, you know, that are in power, as opposed to the slightly liberal guy who, you know, gets his coffee in Portland every day, but said something, you know, that was slightly racist, trying to be funny. Like, if, if you, you can't take it to heart as much if someone was just, like, not, if someone was trying to be, like, funny about it or wasn't trying to offend you, like, if someone was actually coming for your throat, you got a point there. But if they're not, I don't, I don't know how much I can really just root for you at that point, like, just grow up, kinda. <clears throat> but then again, it's coming from me and I, you know, cis, white, straight, male, you know, all that shit. That's me. Um, but yeah, I just don't like, like, I've, I've, I tweeted about this once, like, last year, where it's like, I feel like I'm, <laughs> I feel like people look at me different because I'm not as left as I should be, because I'm not as progressive. Part of that is just because I'm, I come from the pool of, my vote doesn't matter, so, like, there's things I believe in. I, you know, I'm very progressive, but I'll, I'm not going to uh, the marches and shit, like, that's just not, that's just not my thing, I've never, like, protested for my point of view, uh, if I'm arguing with someone, obviously, I'm gonna try to win, but, like, the idea of going out and marching just isn't my thing, but I still, like, it's like, oh, you know, rooting from the, rooting from the stands, um, but nowadays, you, you have to agree with everything that's on, like, your half of the political spectrum, or else, like, it, you might as well just be on the complete other side, which, blows my mind like we're losing people who would fight for us because they're not fighting hard enough for us and so guess what happens they're fighting against you oh who would have predicted that who would have thought that if you're an asshole to someone they're gonna turn against you and then oh they become the asshole that's what happens and we don't understand that and now it's like the boy who cried this is I mean, I wrote this down, but it, it's, I don't know if it'd be more offensive if I didn't say boy, if I said like, um, like Zim or whatever. I don't know. I, I don't know the thing. See, that's going to make me all right. Cause I don't know them, even though I'm just not bothered to learn about them as much as I'm concerned. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to look like an ass cause I don't know. Him. Anyway, the boy who, cr I shouldn't have done that. See, that just makes me look worse. And Okay. All right, the boy who cried wolf. Like, that's what we're going on here, where someone is like, oh, I'm offended, let's get this guy. And everyone, instead of believing that it's not actually a wolf, you know, as the story goes, you know, 
we're seeing these non-threats and then blowing them out of proportion. And we're making people the wolf that really aren't. You know, like, we're just making believe that they are a real threat and taking them down. And then we're like, yeah, look at us. You know, we, we got him. We taught him a lesson, even though he was on your side. So you, you're just biting. You're not biting the hand that feeds as much as like you're you're literally just fucking yourself over. You know, if it was 2016, like, congratulations, you played yourself. But we're in 2019. Not that we've really gone too far if we're still debating this, but, um, yeah. So, uh, there's a, there's this whole thing, and this is one that I've thought about for a long time. And then there's another one that I want to discuss. So, the whole point of the trans movement, right, where it's like, okay, don't be ashamed of who you are, and if you feel different, you know, be who you are, and don't let, like, these gender norms and stereotypes and, you know, don't get, don't let your assigned gender like tell you who you are right you know the, the the whole thing is be who you are and nobody can get mad because you know what that's who i am and i shouldn't be looked down for who i am and at the same time anyone who is just like hey you know i don't really get this and who are they that person is someone who doesn't really know what's going on and instead of you know being like oh okay well i'll inform you instead it's like Oh, well, get the fuck out of here because you're obviously not with us, even though they just they just don't understand it. And that's where most people are. They just don't understand it. And so that's why I feel like there, there's a lot of like the LGBTQ plus there's are there other letters added. I don't know. Um, there's probably something else, uh, but it's like that team. Like there's people outside that aren't LGBTQ plus. I you know what I'm saying. There's people that are in that group that, um, there's obviously everyone in that group is, wants to fight for their own cause. And then obviously there's going to be people who aren't in that group that are fighting for that cause. And a lot of the times it seems like the people who aren't even in that group are fighting for that side and going and just throwing up smoke signals being like, Hey, look at this asshole. Let's get him." Even though maybe there's trans people or whatever that aren't even offended. And that happens with right like racism too all the time where it's like oh wow like you can't do that to black people and then you get hundreds of black people that are like oh, what the fuck are you talking about you know like it's just some fucking white bitch talking and like she's just trying to look like the model citizen when really it's just like we we don't need like we'll tell you if we need you you know when when we need your help to defeat racism, white woman on Twitter, we'll let you know. But, yeah. So, you can't even be yourself because the only people who can be themselves is, like, the people who are marginalized. And that's annoying. Because I just want to be myself. Um, but, yeah. That's all I really have for notes. The problem with saying that is that now I just told my brain, well, that's the end of this. And so, who knows if we'll even go farther. Um, but, of course, we will. So, yeah. Here's here's the thing I thought about uh, two... I want to say two years ago. Three years ago, maybe. But I was sitting in class. And I was thinking about the um, the trans thing, right? And not... All, specifically in the spectrum of, like... I was born a quote-unquote male, but I'm a female, right? And the people who identify as these, right? Listen to this. So, they identify as female because they feel more female or whatever. If you feel more female, aren't you just, like, basing how you feel off of, like, stereotypes? Like, oh, I feel more feminine. Well, what's feminine? And at the same time, society is getting to a point where we're asking ourselves... What is feminine? And people are like, and feminists are like, hey, what's it like to be feminine? It's about being yourself. And there's nothing, you don't have to dress a certain way. You don't have to act a certain way. You are you can be a girl and not have to fucking succumb to what every ugly dude with a bunch of hair on his chest says. Because he doesn't really, he doesn't know shit. And he just wants you to go back in like the laundry room or something. And uh, like... But at the same time, it's like, how can you identify as female if you're like, and you're dressing up based on like the stereotypes or whatever to be like, oh, look at me. I'm a female now, right? 
like, not that I have an issue, like, with people wearing dress, like, I, not that it concerns me, um, it's not something I'm mad about, as much as I'm just, like, um, I just don't understand, like, how, how can you be, like, I identify as female, but at the same time, feminists are, like, nothing should make you female, at least you just be it, you know, and you should just live how you want to, and if you consider yourself a girl, then you're a girl, and at the same time, people who are you know, trying to make it known that they're feminine, like, say, Caitlyn Jenner, they get all, they get the work done, they get the fucking, um, you know, they, they get the dresses on and shit, they get their hair done, their makeup, um, and, like, at this point, um, maybe it's just, like, the whole offending thing, where, um, you, you kind of have to go overboard with it, with, where it's like, you have to make it obvious to all the fucking dumbasses that are like, well, that's not a woman, that's obviously a man, and so, you have to make it abundantly obvious, like, hey, look at me, I was born with a dick, but now I'm a girl, and the only way to really get that across is if you put on a dress and you're like, you, you just have to, like, own up to the stereotypes, is that what it is? Because before this, um... Oh, I don't even know, but that, that's, that's my point, it's like, well, so if you want to be a feminine, like, if you want to be a female, like, at the same time, there's females who are like, you don't have to be anything to be feminine, and you're doing something to be feminine, I don't know, it's confusing, because everyone's working for their own rights, but that never gets questioned, it's like, well, you get, so the, so the feminists will get mad at the men who are like, hey, just shut your mouth, and, you know, fill mine up with dinner, or something, and, They'll be like, oh, yeah, that's not our only job. And then people are like, I'm female now, and I'm dressing like this, and I'm acting like this, and I'm talking like this, and that's how it is. And they're like, yes, thank you. Thank you for your bravery. And it's like, well, are, isn't that contrasting? Isn't that going against each other where it's like you're you're just lifting up the stereotypes to make yourself, to make it known that, you know, you're a female now? Um, yeah. Do I have to put, like, a an advisory sticker, like, a trigger warning, even though I'm trying to be as, like, um, conscious of the other side as possible? And when I say conscious of the other side, it's not so much that I'm against them as much as, like, it, it's going to come across as if I'm against them, even though I'm just trying to, th like, at this point, I'm just thinking things out. None of this is, like, set in stone. You can change my mind. So, like, if anyone were to get mad at this, like, I don't get it. Like, I'm, I'm just, I'm thinking out loud is all I'm doing. You know, and if someone wants to correct me or if someone wants to like talk to me about it, that's that's fine. I'm completely open to that. I don't do anything. I'm still on break from college. Like just hit me up. But if you think I'm an asshole because of this, even though I'm just trying to work it out, like again, we go back to the thing where it's like, well, are you're offended. So should I change or should you change? I'm the one that's trying to change. Maybe you should think about changing also. But sometimes that's just too much to ask. Um, yeah, so that goes on to something I wrote in my notes, like, mad long ago. Just the idea that, um, okay, so dumb people really annoy me, and it's, it's basically, I mean, part of it is, like, it's just unbelievable how much you don't know, but some of it is, like, I just kind of assume that people know what I'm, what I know, or, like, what I'm implying, and having to explain, like, everything that makes sense to me easy, like, easily, like, everything that comes to me, where it's like, well, yeah, that's obvious, like, who doesn't know that, like, I don't want to explain everything, and it's just like, oh, and that goes along with kids, like, when I have kids, like, pfft, lord forgive me, but I'm gonna, like, I'm just gonna be like, well, you're dumb, you know, like, I don't, <laughs> this is so hard, like, it's, like, teaching them, like, I was a peer tutor once, and, like, I was working with someone who, like, obviously wasn't, like, too good, and, you know, needed tutoring, and then I realized maybe I'm not the best tutor, but sometimes, hey, you, you can't base, um, how good the person who needs tutoring, like, their performance off how good the tutor is, because sometimes it just goes in one ear and out the other, um, you know, no matter how many times you try, and, um, yeah, that's just how it is, and maybe one day, I, well, let's not say that, um, okay, what else do we have? Um, all right, time travel. I don't care. Talk about more things that don't make sense to me. Time travel. So, I did not... 
I, I took AP Chem. I took, you know, the regular bio. Like, I didn't do much for sciences. Um, and so the idea of time travel still makes no sense to me. No matter how many times I watch Interstellar or whatever. Like, here, here's where I'm caught up. So, yeah, here's where I'm caught up at. The idea of time travel is like, well, um, so the idea of time travel is like, well, if you do something, you can like go back in time or you go ahead in time. Or if you do something in space, like go through a wormhole or something, time moves like slower for you and faster for others. And one of the reasons that just doesn't like make sense to me is like I'm hardwired on this thing where like time is literally just a sequence of events like the way things progress it's all just a sequence of events like this happens to this happens and all we're doing is just like putting a unit to signify like how long it is between like those events or whatever which for us would be like minutes hours seconds like all that like all it is is just like helping us like understand how long it took between and it's like a standard unit and so the fact that you would like age slower even though like the same amount of time would pass like i don't get how if you go faster it doesn't happen like back like on earth like the same sequence of events is happening the only difference is that you're fucking flying you know it's like driving but in space and i just don't understand that i've tried to i've watched so many videos like by um call me racist but the asian guy with like white hair or whatever um, it, it, I mean, it'd be more offensive if I tried to just rattle off a random Asian name that sounds right, so I won't do that, but yeah, the Asian guy, who's, like, super smart, and he's got white hair, and, I mean, basically, every, everything on YouTube is either him or, like, Neil deGrasse Tyson for some reason, and then, like, Bill Nye, but that's more just, like, a popularity thing, but, yeah, so that makes no sense, and the fact that you can time travel, it's like, well, things have already happened, like, I don't know, unless time travel is literally going to, like, a different, like, uh, universe, oh, like, a different dimension where things work different, you know, like, a, a parallel universe, like, that would make sense, I, I don't know how, but yeah, apparent, like, infinite options, but just because, like, there's infinite possibilities, that doesn't mean there's, like, physically infinite possibilities out there. You know, like, maybe in 5 billion, like, times 17 trillion years. Good good job, I could have just said, like, whatever. Anyway, yeah, maybe in that time there will be, like, a possibility where there's an alternate timeline that, like, formed just out of, like, sheer fucking numbers or whatever. But the, the fact that we just assume that it's, like, happening now, that's also crazy. <sighs> I'm out of breath. This... this it doesn't make sense. Um, but, that, I mean, in terms of everything, that's probably one of the most... That's probably one of the things that confuses me the most. And no matter how many times I hear... I mean, yeah, that goes back to the tutor thing. No matter how many times I hear it, it just doesn't make sense. Ah, I'm going to be cutting out a lot of this just because I cough so much. Dude, I've been sick for two weeks or something. Not sick. Not sick. I'm not sick. I've just been blowing my nose and I've been stuffy and coughing for like two weeks. And there was a point where like I was like no energy, but for the most part, like I've had full energy. Like the only thing that's been dragging down my mood and shit, it's just because it's like, hey, I'm really annoyed that I have to keep like blowing my nose and coughing all the time. And so then I just look sick because I'm literally just pissed off that it's like a persisting issue. Like, just give me a real sickness and let me, like, die over it for five days and then let me be good. Especially over break, because I've been doing everything. I've been going, like, mad places. I mean, not mad places, but I've been doing things a lot in a couple places. And having to blow my nose all the time or, like, having to make sure it doesn't, like, drip onto my pants. I don't want to do that. Okay? Like, No. I don't have, like, my mom carries around, like, tissues everywhere, but I'm not going to do that because men don't carry tissues around. And that's the way things go. By the way, that's not sexist, and that's not really a reason. I just don't want to carry tissues around because then people think I'm sick, and then who wants to hang around with the sick kid? Nobody. But people are probably more scared of my mental illness because I'll flip. Then I wear a, never mind. There's so many things I want to say. There's so many things I probably shouldn't say, honestly. 
like on this specifically but in general there's a lot of things i shouldn't say but um well there's a lot of things i shouldn't say there's a lot of things i shouldn't have said and there's a lot of things i wish i did basically i have regrets for everything i re well, i regret everything and that's why we're changing in 2019 that's why we're going to be a better me um because honestly that's something i can actually work on like because I don't have, guess what, I don't have to leave the house to be a better me. All I have to do is be, like, conscious of what I'm doing, and just by personality's sake, and by, you know, like, having anxiety, whether I'm in a social situation or not, that's going to make me very conscious of, like, what I'm doing and changing. And, um, yeah, so I was watching something about anxiety recently. I know, how many times I drink every time I say it, but... Um, so I was watching something about like social media and anxiety and how like anxiety and depression and like suicidal behavior and shit like that, like blew up after like 2010 or whatever, just because like social media. Um, and that's, I mean, that's good and reassuring for me where it's like, Hey, at least not everyone is like this, but people are just, people are just like, so I don't know if they're scared to say it or what, but. You know, it just makes you feel alone because everyone or no one wants to, like, admit it or no one wants to admit how bad it's been. Like, the only time you'll ever know how bad it is if, like, someone cuts or if someone goes to the hospital for it or you don't see him for a while. And, like, it, it just makes, I mean, it, like, it's not s selfish in a way, but it, it alienates, like, everyone else who's kind of going through it. And that's kind of the reason that I did my uh, New Year's post. Um, just because I did go to, like, such a low point, um, and I was mad about, um, how little attention it got, um, in turn, in terms of, like, physical response, like, no one was, like, thank you for the, like, a few people were, and it's not so mad about, oh, no one listened to me, I didn't get attention, that's something I've always, like, understood, like, people just don't interact with me as much because I, I've never been able to like form like concrete relationships with a lot of people growing up I'm getting much better at it now but it was more like I, I wish more people interacted with it just so I knew that you know other people were conscious about it and that other people whether or not they were going through something were like you know what maybe maybe I should start looking for it more and I should start helping people more and if you are going through it okay thank you like I may, maybe I like I just wanted to be the push not necessarily I but I just wanted there to be a push and by me providing it I just kind of wanted to you know like obviously you're going to expect expect interaction if you're trying to do something good and it's it's not extrinsic as much as it's just like I want to do it for me I want to do it for other people because you know not everyone understands and knowing that there is someone who does understand um I, I think that's just really valuable this this uh this episode isn't exactly the funniest uh, th this has basically just been like rants so Maybe, maybe we'll learn about the other side today, or will, I, maybe we did, maybe we didn't do anything, maybe I just talked to the air, um, I'm definitely gonna, I'll, I'll probably tweet this one out, just because I did talk about something of substance and something that I do want, like, out there, so, you can expect this one on your Twitter, obviously, if you got it through Twitter, you saw it, you're not expecting anything, and that's what we need. No expectations, except we should expect a lot from people because then people will get away with things and people feel like they don't have to, you know, get better and like change themselves. It's all about expectations in 2019 on top of talking about our feelings. <sighs> Hold on. All right, I'm back. I just had to help me paw. Um, yeah, so shit. Let's just say one word and then not say anything else. Um, cool. I don't really know what else to talk about. Um, all that's really been on my mind recently is, like, music. So, um, in terms of things I'm looking forward to, um, The weekend for sure. I did, like, uh, his last EP, his, his Sad Boy Hours EP. That one was pretty good. Um, I was really... 
uh, when I heard about that, Jesus Christ, when I heard that he was coming out with like a more um, energetic album prior to scrapping it for what is it, My Dear Melancholy, um, I'm I feel like that might work its way into the next project that he's been teasing at, but also I don't know, maybe it's just gonna be just as dark. Either way, I want to hear some new weekend. Uh, I love the weekend. Uh, little Uzi Vert, Eternal to Take. Can't wait to hear that. It's probably who knows. I mean, who knows to come out, but I just kind of want to hear a new Lil Uzi project, especially after he was supposed to be on a um a Prime song, which is a rap is a rap group. It's just like a duo. I'll listen to just DJ Premier and Royce Five Nine, some of the goats from the nineties. Um, he was supposed to be on one of those songs, but didn't. So. Um, yeah, speaking of that, I'm definitely going to want to hear another Royce because he's been dropping a bunch of stuff recently, whether it's like the bar exam layers, the prime stuff, his most recent album, Book of Ryan, which is definitely at the top for albums of the year. Um, definitely an underrated gem an under listened gem at least. Uh, who else? Oh yeah. On the same topic, probably like a bad meets evil since he's been telling people to push Eminem for that. I know white boy, get my Mountain Dew and Doritos out, play Call of Duty, cool, whatever. I want to hear that. Um, who else? Tyler, the creator, that'd be kind of cool, um, for my summer. Kendrick Lamar's do. SZA, that'd be good. I need some, um, R&B. Kali Uchi's, when the fuck did she drop? Mad Long, well before I started listening to her, which was this year. Dude, I got my R&B bag, Toward the end of summer, when it was nice out, walking around campus, I'd be walking like to and fro, and by to and fro I mean to and from class. I don't like that I said to and fro, um, but yeah, R and B was the mood. Another Polyphy album. They're just so good at writing guitar hooks and just songs in general. I love them, and they've been putting out stuff like pretty much yearly, I think, for a couple of years. So I'll be excited about that because that'll be part of my. Uh, summer playlist for sure. I love driving to them. And what's crazy is the fact that they are like a guitar, like rock, um, outfit. Uh, people that I, uh, play for, people that I play them for tend to like it probably because there is like a little bit of, um, like a hip hop kind of influence on them. Um, like with the 808s and just like the background beats and just all the technical, um, things that they add to the songs, to the main like guitar, bass, and drums so that'll be cool um <clears throat> i can't remember who else was saying that they were going to come out with something um but yeah just off the top of my head those are some of the things that i'm looking forward to and those are some pretty big names that i uh like hearing from so that'll definitely help my 2018 or t 2019 out um especially with my positivity if i can get all that r and B, i'll be feeling phenomenal um i'm just gonna do a quick look this girl ashley sorrell um s-o-r-r-e-l-l -L. um so she's from detroit and she was on one of royce's uh <clears throat> geez god there's gonna be so many cuts from me coughing but um yeah so she's from detroit she was on one of Roy two of royce's songs and she's just got such a unique um just the way she sings is very unique and i'm tight because she only got uh two songs on spotify but she has more on youtube and if you're looking for a unique urban kind of um i don't even know it's just it's just very kind of raw um but she puts out some mean some mean r&b um who else I don't even keep up to date, but Dan was Caesar, maybe. Oh, G Easy will be coming out this year. That'll definitely be late in the year. He always drops like fourth quarter, I feel. Or at least he did the last couple times, I think. Oh, Kanye. When's he dropping something? Logic will obviously be dropping something. Yeah, I know. Typical white dude. Eminem, Logic, G Easy. Cool. Um Yeah. That's about it. I'm just going through my summer playlist that I made already. And those are like all the bands or and all the artists. Um, but yeah, 2019, really looking for change, really looking for positive vibes. Not that I'm going to be 
all of a sudden the most optimistic or positive person, but it will definitely keep my mood, um, intact. Like I, I, it'll definitely help me from like falling off and give me something to relax and, you know, just be a little bit more happy about, um, especially since I'm not listening to as much like metal as I used to. Um, I mean, that was like, that helped back when I was more angry, but now that I'm more stressed, I need something that lightens the load as opposed to matching my emotions all the time, which is, which is something I really appreciate about listening to a lot of music and having like an ear for multiple genres is that some of these people that only listen to trap, like there's, there's only like, it's only hype music. It's only like feel good, like pregame, like and party music, but I don't know. I need I need a lot more genres to like match how I'm feeling. Like I, I can't just like only listen to trap. Like that gets old. Like I don't know. And then people are like, "Oh, well, you listen to this? Like that makes you weird." But no, it doesn't. It makes me like diverse in what I listen to, making me one more unique, and two like it. Why is it a? Have I talked about this already? Anyway, yeah, that's annoying. Um. Yeah, I think I might just wrap this one up early. Uh, usually it's about, what is it, like 50 minutes. We're at that point. No one really wants to listen to me talk for that long. So, yeah. We don't know when there's going to be another episode. We don't know if there will be another episode. I'm always working on music stuff. I got a lot of progress with that. I got a bunch of beats that just need touched up and more ideas that need to come out. I got a bunch of songs like written and stuff. And I'm, I'm really diving into serious shit on this one and i'm taking it really serious um that like i want to just do everything myself like from the beats up and it's just like a passion thing as opposed to just like yeah i don't know but that's what i want to do for 2019 i want to do that and i want to maybe even help people with that music i hope um or maybe i'll just uh be laughed at again uh either way you know i don't really determine my fate and I mean, I kind of do because I just make sure, or I just, yeah, I just make sure that everything I think is negative. But yeah, this is uh, the word of the Lord, um, and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.